We also presented at ASCO the fair game study. This is a study with the, with the aim to de-escalate chemotherapy in HER2 positive early breast cancer using a PET scan and the PCR response adapted strategy. So why did we run this study? Basically, we know a couple of things. The first one is that optimizing anti HER2 therapies for patients with early breast cancer, of course, HER2, improves pathological complete responses and also improves invasive disease-free survival. We also know the high rate of PCR when we combine chemotherapy plus trastuzumab plus pertuzumab. However, it is well known that there, are, there is a significant number of patients in the range of 20% which can achieve pathological complete remission without chemotherapy. And finally, we also know that early metabolic evaluation using PET might help to recognize those patients with an increased probability of PCR. So then Fergain tried to assess early metabolic response by PET to neoadjuvant trastuzumab plus pertuzumab with no chemotherapy, if patients also express hormone receptor, then anti or endocrine therapy was also administered. And finally, the opportunity of chemotherapy de-escalation with a response adapted strategy. So in brief, patients with 1.5 centimeters of cancer, HER2 positive, of course, no metastatic disease, were randomized to receive TCHP, docetaxel, carboplatin, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab. And this arm is like a control arm. It did not have power to compare both arms. And the second arm, which is the arm or the, the cohort of patients we are going to evaluate, trastuzumab plus pertuzumab. Two cycles. If we have a PET response, we continue with trastuzumab and pertuzumab with no chemotherapy. If not response, we started with chemotherapy plus trastuzumab plus pertuzumab. Now, in the non-chemo cohort, after surgery, if non-PCR, we continue with trastuzumab and pertuzumab with no chemo. So this cohort of patients would have never receive chemotherapy for the treatment of early breast cancer. This study had two primary points. One of them was PCR in PET responders, which is interesting, and this is the endpoint we have presented this year at ASCO. But in my opinion, has a second primary point, which is key. It's a three-year invasive disease-free survival rate in all patients who started treatment with trastuzumab and pertuzumab. They will receive or not chemotherapy depending on, on, on the PET response, and they will receive or not chemotherapy depending on the pathological complete response. But it is true that a significant number of patients in this prospective evaluation will never receive chemotherapy. So maybe this is the first time we will be able to de-escalate chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting based on a uh, uh, three-year invasive disease free survival primary endpoint based strategy. So, which were the results of the first primary endpoint pathological complete remission in patients with PET responders? First of all, I would like to note that the number of patients with a PET response Remember that these patients did not receive chemotherapy, were almost 80%. And between them, 86 patients did achieve pathological complete remission, which means that 37.9% of all patients who respond by PET achieve PCR without having received chemotherapy. 
very interestingly, although as we know, the hormone receptor might anticipate which patients will achieve pathological complete remission, if we include the pet, the pet response there, we should recognize that some patients will receive chemotherapy afterwards. So we will not observe statistical significant differences between pet responders according to the hormone receptor status. Something similar to HER2, 2 plus compared with 3 plus. Breast conservative surgery was very similar in all these patients. Of course, as that we can imagine, the adverse events were much lower in those patients who never received chemotherapy compared to those patients who received chemotherapy up from the first cohort or patients who received chemotherapy after the PET not so a response. So I think that in conclusion, nearly 40% of patients who started dual HER2 blockade, remember, with endocrine therapy if ER positive tumors, and where PET responders achieved a total pathological complete response. So PET might identify patients with HER2 positive early breast cancer who are more likely to achieve PCR with trastuzumab and pertuzumab based therapy. So follow-up is ongoing, and depending on the results of the second coprimary endpoint three-year invasive disease free survival, this strategy could select a group of HER2-positive early breast cancer patients who will not need chemotherapy in the future. 